welcome to the Okanagan Forest Channel. I'm happy that you came along today to, to visit me. Today I'm going to make a video on my off-the-grid frugal cabin here in the Okanagan Highlands. And, well, I'll talk to you more about it as I show you around the site. I'm going to take this from my cameraman right now and take over. And you've seen enough of me, so I'm going to go ahead and just take a look up. You can see the snow through the trees up on the hill there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk around kind of like this. One of the things that I want to talk about today is off-the-grid cabins that I've been looking at on YouTube. There have been so many. Here's another example of the hill up above with snow up on top. And I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a spring runoff creek going full speed ahead down below here. But I want to talk about something very specific here today, and that is off-the-grid frugal cabins. Now, I honestly think that what I have here is about the best off-the-grid frugal cabin ever made. And the reason I say that is that we're approaching 15 years of having this cabin here, and it's better than ever, truly. You can see some snow here in our courtyard. Snow's just about ready to melt. But what I have here, and of course, if you've looked at other videos over the last more than 10 years, you'll see that this off-the-grid frugal cabin made out of a reefer container um, has gone through many different changes. Well, I really like the way it is now. Let's walk over here a little bit closer. One of the big new developments here in our cabin is communications, because after all, we're off the grid. And you can look up there, and there's J Pole John's J Pole for my ham radio system. Now we've got a little wind today, and you can see some of the Bisqueen tarp flying in the in the wind there. That was a roof that I put on. It really didn't ever have any leaks, but that was a roof I put on for $70, and it really worked very well. Let's walk around the back side of the cabin for just a minute. And I know you'll be patient with me as I walk around. I just store stuff back here. This is where the old refrigerator unit was. And of course it doesn't work. And a smart thing to do would be to pull this refrigerator unit out and put a, put a sliding door in here so you'd have beautiful light. But I haven't done that yet. The reason I wanted to come around here is that I want you to see, here's where the, the cable for my J. Pole John ham radio antenna goes into the into the reefer container cabin, my off-the-grid frugal cabin. It's important to note that when you're inside the cabin, you get no radio signal at all, AM, FM, anything. It's, it's, a, it's a clean space, so you really need to be able to have your antenna outside. And for years, I used a shortwave when I didn't have ham, and I would send a wire up into that tree to the right there where you see the rope that was to hold the antenna up. But while we're here, I also want you to take a good look at this stovepipe and the way we've got it set up. This stovepipe comes out the side of the wall so the roof isn't in any way encumbered. And I don't know if you can see right now, but there's, there's heat coming out of it because, well, this morning it was 28 degrees Fahrenheit here. And it was plenty chilly. And so it's really kind of nice to have that wood stove making everybody really warm. And I'll, I'll bring that up a little bit later. Got something I'll show you inside. But there's another look at that, at that chimney and how it works. It just comes out of the side of the wall. I put extra wood down underneath the container. And you'll see this in some other videos. But basically what I've done is what we originally did, and this was thanks to Tony, my heavy equipment operator, we just put the container up on ecology blocks so that it would be up and it would be clean. 
off the ground. And that's worked really beautifully. So let's come out this side. I want you to continue to be patient with me and we'll look back again at that. Well, you can see a little smoke coming out now, maybe. Maybe not because the sun is kind of in our eyes. But this is my driveway. You can see up there to the Republic of Cascadia flag and the driveway going up. But let's walk over for just a minute and take a good look at this outhouse. Because in an off-the-grid cabin, one of the important things is to have a, a good place to do your business. And it should be inviting and so on and so forth. We built this a number of years ago. And I'm really quite happy with it, to tell you the truth. It's, um, it's not uh, quaint or anything like that, but its utility is just really outstanding. So let's go ahead and go inside for just a minute and let you have a look around. And again, be patient with me as I try to maneuver the, the video. And what I did to dress it up in here was put some maps up. This, here's a, a toilet seat cover that's never used for in the middle of winter when you freeze your tush and you sit down. And here's maps of British Columbia and the Okanagan Highlands. And here's a sign that I got when I used to work um, at the American Embassy in Beijing. And I remember in the early 1980s, these were actually in the toilet stalls in the embassy. And you can read that and try to figure it out. But the other thing that I have here that's really kind of nice is I put some literature on the life of the cougar, identifying wolves in the wild, and important bear tips. And that is just to make it a little more pleasant. And then I put some reading material down. And those baby formula cans are where we have the toilet paper and that keeps it clean and nice. Um, this is really a pleasant view. When I sit on the throne, in fact I'm going to sit down right now and show you what I can see when I'm sitting on the throne. Now that's what I look at when I'm sitting on the throne. How many of you folks have a view like that? Probably not many. So now be patient with me again while I exit the outhouse and get down back onto the ground. And here you can see kind of a view of the entrance of the cabin. That door system is kind of like an Adirondack um, shelter. I really like to have that open because after all, you're up here camping. You don't want to be cloistered away inside a building or a, a you know a shelter so that plywood comes out and the plastic up on top rolls up and so the the door is completely open and that's kind of how it is so let's walk over there you know this whole setup here and I've been using it now I think it's approaching 15 years and that's what I want to make the point about for 15 years, I've used this off-the-grid off the cabin like this. And, you know, there's so many of these videos on YouTube where people build a cabin and they live in it for six months or a year and then they want to build another one. And, of course, I guess that's good content. But if you want something that's really frugal, you should think about this. Okay, there's another view up the drive and then of the outhouse. <laughs> oh, I knew I was going to do that. <laughs> Just when you're making a video. Well, hopefully we'll get, get through the rest of it without those kind of problems. All right, let's go ahead and go inside the cabin for a minute and have a look. I know there are other videos, but this is the current rendition. And then you can see how that plywood slides back and forth, and it makes it really easy to open up the door. Now, inside the cabin, first of all, this is kind of the reading room. You can see some of my daughter's school awards. And then that's Washington State. And the cabin is right there. I don't know if it's going to focus clearly for you, but that's where the cabin is. And you can turn around and look at the view from 
inside the, the off the grid frugal cabin. And then here you can see we have a simple stove. And I do, when I'm up here by myself, that's the kind of cooking I do. But you know what's interesting is that a lot of the cooking that I'm up here now with my daughter, and a lot of the cooking we've been doing because it's early and because we have the, the wood stove going, um, is on the wood stove. And you can see the kitchen area. This hasn't changed much from earlier uh, videos, but you can kind of see how it's set up. And again, it's, it's all frugal stuff just a couple pieces of plywood on some blue barrels for a counter and that's where we keep all, everything that we need. I like to keep things stored inside if I can so you can see where the spicy cider is inside a container that's stored. The same thing with all of that stuff. I try to keep it stored as best I can. You can see our water system and I really like the water system because you got to pump the water so you don't waste it. You know, if it was free flow, people would use more water. But as it turns out, they don't use that much water. And if we slowly pan over here to the other side, you're going you're gonna to see where we have our storage. And below the storage is some of the wood that we use for, for the fireplace. Those two bags that are above, those are hanging up there. Those have perishables in them, uh, bread, bagels, and some snacks and things. And I like to put those up there. But I'd like to also point out these hooks that I'm using up here. I bought those in the, in the bazaar in Kashgar. And the hat that I have on that you saw me wearing when I started, I also bought in Xinjiang. And you know, the people in Xinjiang are having a really hard time right now. And I wish them well and hope that they can preserve their culture. All right. Let's go a little farther back. So we, we took a look at the wood, but let's take a quick look at the fire as well. And you can also, as we're moving towards the, the stove, you can see uh, on the other side there, that's, that's our water backup. That's the water that we've got that's stored here. Now I use this little, and I got it at Ikea, this little Kia bench for when I sit down to do things with the fire. So let's take a look. Well, before we do that, let's look on top. I have these teapots, and this is a great way to keep hot water. Actually, I like it better than what it would be if it were, um, you know, a tank that a lot of people have on wood stoves. Why? Because this is so flexible. I can move them around. If I don't want it so hot, I take them off. And you notice how they're on, on grates that hold them up. That, that way it doesn't boil. It just keeps it hot. Now underneath, I'll pick this one up for a minute, you can see my Paula Dean griddle. And there's a couple pieces of potato still left there. That's where we cooked our breakfast. And that griddle really works beautifully on this, on this stove. All right, let's go ahead and sit down on the bench and open the fire. Well, that looks to me like it's, it's going pretty good. Yes, sir. So we got plenty of plenty of fire in the fireplace. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly be patient with me. Take this down so it doesn't block our view. There you go. And that's the kitchen area. where I keep all the things that we use for cooking. I want to say, and I've said it in other videos, but the frying pan on the left and the frying pan on the right are both over 100 years old. And they cook just as well today as they did 100 years ago, or actually, I think the one on the left is from the 1880s, so that's kind of neat. Now up above, and this is one thing I did really early in this container, I'm really happy with it. Up above, I put this long shelf pretty much almost the full length. You can see it going all the way back to the back of the container. But I have this long shelf and that's where we store a lot of things. Above the kitchen we've got coffee pots and other utensils. You can see those cups and I've got sterno fuel up there. And the reason is that I want to keep it warm so that it's ready to go when I 
I want to use it in the little stove. And from here again, you can take a look out, out through the, the open door. And that's, that's really so very pleasant. So let's go ahead and move back a little bit farther. In this part, I've done two things. First of all, everybody wants a log cabin in the wilderness, and I have a log cabin. That's my log cabin, and that's Jack and Jill, my daughter's dolls, in front of it. And um, you can see that, in, I think, in a video that I made, an intro video too. But So I can tell everybody that, my goodness, I have a log cabin here. But what I want to show you here mostly is the storage. We keep canned goods down there, but in the winter when it's freezing, we have to take them away. And then there's more fuel for the stove. And if we turn to the other side of the cabin, again, looking out the door for a minute, see how bright and beautiful it is there. And we come over here. This is the tool area. And that blue bucket is where we keep a lot of the tools and so on and so forth. Okay, and we turn around again and we come to the office. Here's the office area. And you can see the desk. It's a little messy there this morning because we've been doing things here. But what I really want to show you is the battery pack and the ham radio system that I have set up. Now, I've communicated um, quite some distance with this and it's just that little handheld radio on the left and then it's kept turned on with a big battery pack that's sitting inside that uh, am ammunition box and there's our cable that goes outside to the antenna that we saw before and it works really well. You can look at me talking on it in another video. So let's back up and just look at the rest of the desk area. There's the shortwave radio right there in the center that I used for so long before I had ham radio. And then up above, there's a clock. And here's an antique plate which has a map of Okanagan County on it, which I always thought was kind of neat. And then I've got a few other knickknacks and things like that. Lewis and Clark. And above on the shelf, I have my extra candles that I keep up there. And that brings me to the other side of the room. Let's pivot around again. Take a brief look outside the window. You see how all that light comes into the cabin? That's free sunlight. Again, very, very frugal. Now what I want to point out here is that I don't have solar cells or a uh, wind turbines or any of that stuff. I've chosen to make this off the grid cabin more of a pioneer cabin. So I use candles mostly. When I'm up here by myself, I use them almost exclusively. But I also have some battery lanterns that I use. And you can just see the candles. Now I want you to see this one because I discovered this one this morning. Now there should be no doubt, I put this too close to the, to the stove last night. And you can see what happened to that candle. So clearly, although it was well below freezing here, inside the container uh, cabin, inside the frugal um, reefer container cabin that I have here, it was really very warm. The other thing I want to point out is you can see this religious candle here. That really works well. One of those burns for almost three days. And it's scented. And so when I come up to my cabin, I put one of those on and I just leave it on the whole time I'm here. So now let's go ahead and pivot a little farther. And, well, you can hear the repeater making as somebody trying to say something on the repeater there. That's, that's what that background sound is because we've got it on right now. But now what I'd like to finally do is take you into the bedroom. And the bedroom is behind this white... There we go. And like I said, I'm up here with my daughter uh, this time. And so my bed is on the right. And her bed is on the left. And I have this big mirror there. I can maybe wave at everybody from here. You can see me again. Of course, it's kind of a silhouette, I guess. But 
this is really nice it provides a little privacy and if we come back here you can see that there's my daughter's musical instrument and we'll turn around again and you can just see how much light there is in this even though I haven't structurally really changed this thing uh, very much at all if I had the budget I don't yet but if I had the budget you can see down here lots of storage that's behind on the opposite side from the, the office but if I had the budget I would take this wall out that I'm looking at right now with the mirror and put a sliding glass window in there and you'd have beautiful light and force coming in this side too I'd really like to do that so I'm going to turn around now and begin to head head on back outside you can see that it's certainly not fancy uh, somebody's trying to talk let me see if I can rouse anybody K7 MGE monitoring uh, can anybody give me a radio check Thank you very much. I appreciate it. That's K7MGE out. Well, that was just somebody that was listening, and they took my signal. And of course, in an emergency, um, a communication system like that would really be uh, important and really worthwhile. So I'm going to go ahead and go back outside and thank you if you actually listened to all of this video. <laughs> I'm surprised because I'm certainly no videographer. But let me walk over here again and get one last picture, if I can, one last view of the mountains across the valley that still have snow on them. I'm walking across this icy snow now. I hope I don't slip. But I want to thank you for coming to visit the Okanagan Forest Channel on YouTube. And the next time you see somebody that has some really fancy cabin, you ask yourself, now how long have they used it? And I think you'll find very few, it's kind of hard to see through the trees, but there's a lot of snow still up on that mountain across the way. But it's hard to, hard to see a cabin like this, a frugal off the grid cabin that has been in service for now almost 15 years and is working just as well now as it did before. Well, I want to go ahead and say goodbye. Thanks for stopping by. Good luck to you and good luck with your project.